today is our last day here at Lake Mead. We've exhausted our 15 day stay limit, so we gotta get out. We're gonna head to Red Rock Canyon now on just on the other side of Las Vegas. So it's not too far, only like a 40 minute drive because it's still too cold to go really any further north, even though it's mid-March. We really wanna start going north, but it's still really cold out, so you know, we can't go where it's freezing, so we gotta stay where it's, it's at least relatively warm. We've loved our time here at Lake Mead, though. Finally, we were able to find some trails that we could take our dog Sweetie with us on because she loves exploring, too. And she had a blast, we had a blast. It was a great time. Sweetie isn't our only animal, though. We've also got a cat named Butters and two rabbits, Min and Tat. And when people find out how many animals we have living with us in such a small RV, they're typically pretty surprised. They're like, why would you have so many animals in such a small RV? Our RV is only 25 feet long, it has no slides, so admittedly it's pretty cramped in there. <laughs> typically people are like, a cat? Yeah, that makes sense. A large dog in an RV this small? You know, that's maybe a little weird. And then rabbits? When they find out we have rabbits, it's like, what is going on? But honestly, we got all these pets when we were still living in a house before the thought of full-time RVing even popped into our minds. So when we finally decided that we wanted to become full-time RVers, we couldn't leave them behind. We love them all too much. We're way too attached to every one of them. You know, the dog, the cat, and the rabbits, they're part of our family, so we had to take them along with us. That's not to say though that there aren't some definite downsides though to full-time RVing with pets, especially so many. The biggest downside, I'd say, is the amount of space they take up. Again, our RV is not very big, so having four animals, they take up a lot of space. You know, we've got the rabbit's cage, the cat's litter box, the dog food, the cat food, the rabbit's hay and their pellets, the rabbit's bedding, and then the dog and cat themselves. Cat's small, she doesn't really take up a lot of room, but the dog, Sweetie is a full-blooded Rottweiler, not the smallest dog breed ever, so she, she takes up a lot of room herself. So living in this small RV, we really don't have a lot of extra space. Throw in four animals, and now we're really cramped on space, especially storage space. We would love to have more storage space, but like I said, they're dog food and bedding and et cetera, et cetera, it takes up a lot of our storage space. We're about to leave for our next destination though, so we need to get everyone ready. Everyone rides in the truck with us on travel days for safety reasons. We wouldn't feel safe leaving any of our animals in the RV while we're rolling down the road, so everyone gets in the truck with us, and the rabbits need to be put into their smaller travel cage because their usual cage that they live in inside the RV is way too big to fit inside the truck. So the rabbits and Sweetie go in the back seat of the truck, which, is another downside because they take up the entire backseat of the truck. So that is more room that is now unusable because it's taken up by our animals. But on the way to our next destination, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that we have to travel through town. So we're gonna stop at the grocery store, fill our propane up and pick up a package from the post office. Another downside to traveling with animals is when we go grocery shopping on travel days, which is just about every travel day because we take advantage of the fact that we're already in town. Someone has to stay behind in the truck, which is Jenny in this case. So only one of us gets to go inside to do the grocery shopping because you know, we're just uncomfortable leaving all our animals alone locked up inside the truck, especially on hot days, because you know we don't want it to get too hot in the truck. So if someone is left behind inside the truck with them and it starts to get hot, they can fire the truck up, turn the AC on. And even though today is a cold day, um, we still aren't comfortable leaving them alone inside the truck. So Jenny's gonna stay inside the truck with them and keep an eye on them.
So we're finally at our next destination, which is BLM land, just outside of Red Rock Canyon National Recreation Area on the other side of Vegas from Lake Mead. So it's on the northwest side of Las Vegas. And admittedly, we got here a little later, well, a lot later than we planned. We wanted to be here about midday, but it's already sunset and that's you know nothing new for us unfortunately this site is incredibly beautiful it is just wide open there's no one else out here but us it is incredibly quiet and best of all it's free and th that's a big reason that we're able to continue this lifestyle of ours is that we boondock on free land a lot and we live kind of that minimalist lifestyle that comes with just living in a small rv and that sort of leads into the next downside of having animals while traveling is the added cost. Having a dog, a cat, and two rabbits isn't cheap. You know, we have to pay for food, bedding, vet bills, cat litter, everything that comes along with animals. And those expenses can really add up and they're a lot bigger deal for us now that we're on the road. But now that we're finally here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the outside of the RV all set up before the sun sets and it gets really cold and dark. So we finally got the RV all set up and I went ahead and swept the floor, which I need to do about every other day because having so many animals in such a small space means that there's hair everywhere which is another downside of traveling with animals in an RV, especially a small one, is the mess. They shed, um, the rabbits, when they hop out of their cage to explore the RV, they track their bedding out with them. You know, they always kick out some of their bedding and the cat uh, will track her cat litter around too. Essentially, there's always just a mess. So it's safe to say that the RV would be a lot cleaner and there would be a lot less cleaning chores if you traveled without animals because these guys they just don't care about how clean your rv is they just don't care you don't care do you to help deal with that shedding issue though on our bed at least is we put this gold blanket down on top of the duvet that we actually sleep in because the dog and the cat sleep on the bed primarily throughout the day. That's like their primary sleeping spot. So we noticed early on that if we just let them sleep right on top of the duvet that th just hair piles up like crazy on it. And it also starts to really smell like dog in particular. So we put this, this gold blanket down on top of our gray duvet so that it helped keep the, the hair off and especially the smell. And at night, they've woken us up quite a bit. Like if the dog gets up and starts pacing around, her nails will click on the floor and it can wake us up. And the cat will also, you know, bash stuff around randomly at night. And if the rabbits, you know, start digging or they'll thump their back feet and make a lot of noise and wake us up in the middle of the night too. Um, you know, when we lived in our house, they would still do all that stuff too, but we had a separate bedroom, so we wouldn't hear that. But here in our small RV, everything's in the same room, so you definitely hear it, and it definitely wakes us up at night. You wake us up at night. Yes, you do. Okay. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. One issue that we've gotten a lot of questions on is what do we do with the animals when we go out and adventure during the day? And the answer is simple. We do the exact same thing as if we were in the RV with them. If it's a warm day, we open all the windows and we turn the max fan on. And that makes it so the temperature that it is outside is the temperature that it is in the RV. However, if it is too hot of a day, then we simply don't go adventuring that day. We push it back to a different day that has a lower high and we just stay home with our animals and make sure everyone's getting plenty of water and staying cool. And if it is even just like way too hot, we do have a generator that we can take out, fire up and turn our AC on. 
Keep in mind that we live in our RV and have been living in it full time for almost a year now. So we've gotten a really good feel for what days are fine and what days are simply too hot and we need to stay home with the animals to keep them cool. And if it is too hot, we'll simply push back the adventure day to a day that isn't as hot. So that's all the downsides and issues that come with traveling full time in an RV with your pets, especially so many pets, but the upside is obvious. The love, the companionship that you get from these animals just makes it all worth it. We had all of our animals when we lived in our house before the thought of full-time RVing even crossed our minds. So when we finally made the decision to move into our RV full-time and travel the country, there's just no way we could leave any of them behind. They all have their distinct personalities that add like a certain flavor to our lives and we just couldn't imagine life without them. Sweetie is my cuddle puppy and we lay like this every single night. Right before bed, she falls asleep with me and it's just one of the greatest feelings in the world. Butters is a cuddle kitty too and she'll lay on Jenny's lap all day while she's working on her laptop and just sleep in her lap. And our rabbits, Min and Tat, are just absolutely adorable. They'll hop out of their cage and just start hopping around the RV and exploring it and they're just so adorable. Uh, they do what's called bunny binking when they get excited. If you don't know what it is, Google it. <laughs> and they are just inseparable. They're best friends. They snuggle with each other and they groom each other. And when they hop out of the, their cage, they'll come up to you and they'll nudge you with their little heads right on your ankles. They're just adorable. And I'm telling you, nothing kills stress and anxiety after the end of a long day like this right here. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. And one pro of having such a large dog that does add peace of mind is when we do leave the RV, we know that there's a full-blooded Rottweiler behind. And while she is sweetie, and she is a sweetie through and through, she does have quite a bark on her. So if anyone knocks on the RV or kind of gets close, yeah, she lets them know that there is a Rottweiler inside. So that does add a little peace of mind too knowing that she's behind guarding the fort. So even though we do get some weird looks from time to time when people find out that we've got a dog, a cat, and two rabbits traveling with us full time in such a small RV, it just doesn't matter because they make it all worth it with their love and their companionship. And we honestly could not imagine life without them. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want more videos from us, be sure to subscribe. And if you want more details on what we did today, be sure to check out the link to the blog post in the description below. We'll catch you guys later. Bye.